The Salton Sea is characterized by hyperbole in that it is California's largest lake at 370 square miles in surface area. It hosts the greatest diversity of birds in the continental United States with more than 400 species of birds being recorded there. My own involvement with the Salton Sea began some 14, 15 years ago when I came back down to the University of Redlands and took my position as a professor here uh, and I was put in the position of the Salton Sea Database Program Director. I was immediately struck when I first went down to the sea in this role uh, by its incredible beauty in kind of an austere uh, way. It's uh, huge. You look across it and you can't really see the other side from certain, from some places. Um, and yet, unlike the ocean, it achieves a, an incredible stillness sometimes, where uh, the silvery waters and the beautiful sunsets from its east shore are unlike anything else I've ever seen. For the past century, the sea has been sustained from agricultural runoff, largely from the Imperial Valley. The Imperial Irrigation District has been drawing its water from the Colorado River. However, through a U.S. Supreme Court action called the Quantification Settlement Agreement, California was ordered to reduce its take from the Colorado River. So this is going to have a direct impact on the Salton Sea in that we're expecting the inflows to go down from 1.3 million acre feet a year down to as low as 800,000 acre feet, perhaps even lower than that. So the sea is getting saltier every day, every single day. It's now a third saltier than the ocean. It makes it challenging to sustain fish populations. My name is Gary Wyatt. I'm a county supervisor from Imperial County in District 4. The, the water that comes in is laden with salt. The water evaporates, the salt remains. Fish populations sustain the birds. So we have environmental challenges, we have water quality challenges as well. You can solve this problem if you had $10 billion. Nobody's got $10 billion to spare today. It's uh, John J. Benoit. I'm a Riverside County Supervisor, 4th Supervisorial District. Many of them have, have little idea of the kind of threat uh, a dry lake bed here would have on air quality in our region. The Salton Sea area, Imperial Valley in particular, already has the worst childhood hospitalization rates for respiratory disease in California. So this is the baseline condition. Add to that this new exposure of lake bed sediments in the dry desert wind conditions and we have a potential disaster, an air quality disaster, a human health disaster that would result in literally thousands of additional hospitalizations and potentially deaths from respiratory disease such as asthma and emphysema. Well, one of the remarkable things about the Salton Sea is that it sits on a virtual treasure chest of geothermal energy. Our estimates are that the total production capacity of the geothermal field alone could be on the order of two and a half to three and a half, perhaps even four billion watts of energy. This is enough to power more than a million homes. So uh, this would be an enormous source of clean, renewable energy. So our challenge is to maintain the Salton Sea with approximately half of the water that we have sustaining the sea today. And that would be by cutting the sea in half, maintaining the north basin of the sea, uh, while the southern half is going to dry out. Part of the solution here is that we could maintain the North Basin as a stable marine environment while 
uh, the south basin would become exposed. But we would then cover the south basin with renewable energy arrays, with geothermal energy, with solar energy, and that these would then provide not only a cover for the lake bed, but also an energy and revenue source to pay for the maintenance and operation of the facilities over time. Whenever you're talking about reclaiming water, desalination and so forth, yeah, Jim Hanks, I'm a director with the Imperial Irrigation District, Division 3. It's very expensive, it's, it, it requires a lot of energy. And there will be off-peak hours where there will be energy available here. So to me, this would be the logical place for that to become part of the local economy. These are big ticket items, no, no doubt. The estimates for the waterworks construction for the Salton Sea project itself is on the order of one to two billion dollars. Um, the, however, with this energy production and with a stabilized sea, we have the potential revenue source and energy source to actually do this. Our estimates are that we could altogether uh, be producing as much as $25 billion in energy production, uh, which would more than offset the cost of construction over a relatively short period of time for the return on investment of those energy facilities. People out at the Salton Sea are a unique, a unique breed in themselves. It's a really close community. There's a large portion of the people around the sea that represent some of the most depressed communities in California. And this is all they've got. They can't afford to move elsewhere. And so they have to live with this one way or the other. A woman approached me the other day at one of the public hearings on the sea and, and just expressed to me how she was so encouraged by this recent activity and the sense of momentum that we've got again on the restoration planning effort. And she said something to the effect that she didn't think that she'd be alive to see the benefits of a restored salt and sea. But she's going to work on this and do anything she can to throw her support behind it for her grandkids. And it really is about them. This is about future generations uh, that live in and around the sea that would appreciate seeing flocks of tens of thousands of snow geese, whether you're here or in Canada. Um, these are their birds. Um, so. To me, the sea represents a solution in many ways, not just for water and for fish and wildlife. It's, a, it's an example of how people can, in fact, live with and make the best of the environment in a sustainable way. In this world, there is a balance. Whether you call it nature or whether you call it uh, God's creation, there is a balance. We are the stewards of the land and the environment, and I think we have that responsibility to maintain it. So it is a, it's a generational thing that we want to hand off to the next generation and their next generation, uh, and hand it off in a good way. And, and that's where I, I do think that uh, this is real exemplary. If we can do this, if we can pull this off, then you know, there's tremendous hope.